Nanite tessellation and vertex painting with height lerp. In this video, I'll create a material that utilizes these to add great looking details to our environments. So let's do it. The project file for this video is available on my Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, you can find the video for all the notes I used to create the material on my channel. So if you're not familiar with any of them, make sure to check out the material notes playlist. Right click in the content browser and create a new material. On the left search for nanite. Check the enable tessellation and used with nanite options. If you don't know how to enable nanite tessellation, watch this video. I've already downloaded some materials from Quicksell Bridge. Massy Rocky Ground, Melting Snow, and Cobblestone. These are the ones I'll use in my material. Let's organize them like this. We're going to have multiple materials in one material, so we should use the material attributes nodes. Add a set material attributes node here. We need four array elements. Base color, roughness, normal, and displacement. Connect them like this. In the mask texture, the green channel is the roughness, and the blue channel is the displacement. Let's actually multiply the displacement by a parameter before connecting it. Convert the textures to parameters and name them. Set their group to mat1 base. This is going to be the base material and set the sort priority to 0. Let's add my function to control the size of the textures. Watch this video to learn how to download and use it. Select the parameters and set their group and sort priority. Now I need two named reroots here. One I'll connect to the set material attributes node. I'll name it mat1 and one I'll use for the height texture. We're gonna need it when setting up the height blending. Name this one mat1 height. Select all the nodes and press C to add a comment. Now that's better organized. Let's do the same thing with the other two materials. Now we have three materials and the parameters are organized in three groups. I want to control mat2 with the R channel and mat3 with the green channel when vertex painting. That's why I added R and G to the name of their groups. Select the main material node and enable the use material attributes option. To blend the material attributes we've created, we should use the blend material attributes node. First we should blend mat1 and mat2. Then we should blend the result with mat3. Next I'll create the alphas. I have a video about the height lerp nodes and how to use them with vertex painting. So if you're not familiar with them, I recommend you watch that first. Add the height lerp with two height maps function here. 
I'll use this function to create the alpha. For the transition phase, I'll add a vertex color node and use its red channel. Add a parameter, run it through an absolute node and connect it to the contrast input. I'll name this one height contrast mat 2. It controls how material 2 blends with material 1. Negative contrast values don't look good. That's why I use the absolute node to make sure it's always positive. Let's bring mat 1 height and mat 2 height. Multiply both of them by a parameter. Mat1 is connected to the A input of the blend and Mat2 is connected to the B input. So we should connect Mat1 height to height texture 2 and Mat2 height to height texture 1. I've explained why we do this in the height lerp video. Connect the alpha output to a named root and name it alpha1. This is the alpha we should connect to the first blend. Now let's create the second one. Duplicate the height lerp function. Connect the green channel of the vertex color to its transition phase input. Duplicate the contrast parameter and the absolute node. Rename it to mat3 and connect it to the contrast input. On the blend node, the resulting blend is connected to the A input and mat3 is connected to the B input. So I'll use the resulting height map from here for height texture 2 and I'll use mat3 height for height texture 1. Before connecting it, let's multiply it by a parameter. Connect the alpha output to a named reroute. This is alpha2. Now put all these parameters in the height group and press C to add a comment to all of them. Up here connect alpha1 to the first blend and alpha2 to the second blend. Connect the blend node to the main node and it should work just fine. Save the material, create a material instance and assign it to your mesh. Make sure nanite is enabled for the mesh. Open the material instance. Let's first make the textures smaller. I'll set the size for all of them to 0.1. Right now the displacement is not that visible. From here I'll set the magnitude to 30 to better see it. Keep in mind that the scale of the mesh directly affects the displacement magnitude. For example these planes are the same size but this one has a scale of 1 and this one has a scale of 30. If I assign the same material to both of them, displacement will appear 30 times stronger on this one. So if you want them to look the same, this one should have a magnitude of 1 and this one should have a magnitude of 30. Duplicate the material, set its magnitude to 1 and assign it. Now they look the same. The height multiplier default values should be 1. I forgot to do that. So let's do it and save the material. In the height section of the material instance, we have these five parameters. By default, we see mat1. It is the base material. We can increase the height of mat2 and mat3 to control which one is showing. For example, as I increase the height of mat2, the pebbles slowly start to emerge. And after a while, we only see the pebbles. By default, the transition is smooth. We can change that with the contrast parameters. For example, when the height of mat2 is 4, if I increase its contrast to 3, it looks much better and the height blending is much more visible now. The same is true for mat3. If I increase its height to around 4 and increase its contrast to 1, we can see it being added from the bottom of the pebble stones. If I set the height of mat1 to 1.1, we see a little more of the rocky ground. 
let's reset all the parameters to their default value. So this was the height blending. Next, I'll go over how to vertex paint a nanoite mesh. But before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you're interested in supporting the channel and downloading the project file for this video, check out my Patreon. The links are in the description. Normally when we want to use vertex painting, we should select the mesh and from up here, go to the mesh paint mode. But with nanite meshes, it doesn't work like that. We should go to the modeling mode, on the left select the attributes section and while the mesh is selected in the viewport, click on paint vertex colors. By default, all the vertices are white. That's why the object is white. In the visualization section, set the material mode to original material. Check the R, G and B channel filters. Then down here, click on fill white. Nothing changes because as I said, the vertex color are white by default. But if we click on fill black, we can see that the snow covers everything. Let's click on fill white again. In order to paint the other layers, we should change the paint color to black and the eraser color to white. Now if I only enable the R channel, I can paint the stone. And if I only enable the G channel, I can paint the snow. One thing to consider is that because we're painting from the modeling tools, the vertex paint will be saved on the source of the mesh in the content browser. Right now, we can't paint each instance individually like what we can do with non-nanite meshes. So keep this in mind. When we're in the paint mode, we can't see the displacement. But as soon as I click on accept, we can see it again. Now let's tweak the material parameters. And this is what I came up with. I don't like the way snow is being added. We can use a noise texture to make it look better. Let's go back to the material. Down here in the alpha section, add the noise texture from the starter content. Drag out of one of its channels and connect it to a named reroute. Duplicate these and connect it to the UV's input. Name the parameter size noise texture. Set its group to height and reset the sort priority. Here disconnect mat 3 height from the multiply node. Add a lerp node and the name reroute for the noise texture. Connect them like this. For the alpha, I'll add a parameter, run it through a saturate node and connect it. Name the parameter use noise as height texture mat3. Now when it's 0, mat3 height texture will be used and when it's 1, the noise texture will be used. Set the group to height and save the material to see how it looks. Here are the new parameters. Let's tweak them. Increase the used noise texture value and it looks way better. I mean way better. Just look at it. 0, 1. 0, 1. Let's decrease it to 0 0.8. We can also change the noise size. Something like 0 0.7 looks good. And just like that, the look of the scene has drastically enhanced. Just look at the small snow details and how it blends with the pebble stone and the ground. It's puffiness. It looks really good. In the next video, I'll add puddles and weathering effects to the material. So click here to learn how to do that. And thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe, and join our communities on Telegram, Discord, and Facebook. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So, see you in the next one.